as being a current member of the national team now four years um, and your experience, can you tell us anything about that? Um, and then also how you got there when you mentioned that you played for the provincial teams? Yeah, so I guess how that kind of started is um, I would have been would have been in Bantam. I started going to some of the the BC hockey uh, camps. Um, I want to say they're called the regional camps. So, you know, there'd be one on the island, one in Vancouver, one up north, that sort of thing. Um, so I started out there. And then when I was in grade 10, I got um, invited to like a U18 provincial camp. Uh, I ended up making Team BC that year. And then I continued to play for Team BC um, for three years. So two years at an under 18 national championship and one year at Canada Winter Games. Uh, and then playing in those tournaments, uh, I got recruited to play for the under 18 national team. So I got to go to those camps for two years and I made the roster my grade 11 year and grade 12 year. So I played under 18 uh, national team and competed at two world championships with that team. And then from there, I mean, once you're, once you've kind of been to one camp with the national team, you're, you're on the radar and they'll, they'll continue to watch you throughout your high school and college career and um, invite you to hopefully invite you to different camps here and there. So I, I was fortunate enough to play the two U18 years and then I continued on in the under 22 team. So I played for the under 22 team for two seasons. Um, and then from there I got picked up with the senior national team um, the year before the 2018 Olympics. Okay, yeah. Um, so with those, was it called back in my days, it was BC best ever, but uh, okay. it's, probably, it's probably changed now with the, with the names. Um, but when you play, for the BC hockey is you said in your regions, right? Like there's different zones. Yeah. So for, I think for the, I know they do like under 14 and under 16 now, and they hold these regional camps. So for the Island, it was always the Island. So there'd be one camp for the whole Island. Um, yeah, I'm not sure if we split that now or not, but so you kind of started out there and that just kind of got you a, a feel for what it was like. And then, the under 18 provincial camps, uh, which I think now they actually bring some U16 players to them. Um, I, I, now I go back and I help as a coach, so I'm still kind of involved, but um, I know they kind of, they call them different things like BC high performance, or I know they've been called like pursuit of excellence, uh, BC hockey camps, and they bring in, you know, 60 to 80 girls uh, for those camps and then pick a roster for, for the championship every year. Okay. Yeah. And then, so from there, as you got recruited and started playing for the national team and, and we're on their radar, um, can you share maybe some stories or, or mentors that you looked up to that kind of, I guess, paved the way to the player you are today now? Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, I think, um, I grew up watching the Olympics every four years and I knew that that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to play at the Olympics. So I grew up watching players, like Cassie Campbell, Haley Wickenheiser, Jillian Apps, uh, all those players, Jaina Hefford. And, um, you know, now, and as I went through the program, these players were either still around or I, they were back as coaches. So, you know, my first, my first senior camp, I was in grade 12 and I went to the camp and I got put in, my roommate was Rebecca Johnson, who was like one of the most, you know, well-known names on the national team. And she actually went to Cornell. So, and I had already committed to Cornell. So I was super nervous to be her roommate. Um, I was, she probably would have been, you know, 27, 28 and I was 18. Yeah. So um, yeah, that was, that was pretty nerve wracking to go to those camps and in a sense be, you know, with your heroes and be in the locker room with them on the ice with them and be expected to, you know, act like you were supposed to be there <laughs> with them. Right, that's right, for sure. Even though you're there and you should be there. Um, yeah, exactly. I know what you mean with that. Uh, it's almost like a, a life skill and a skill where, where young players, you know, you, you get starstruck. And uh, that's one thing that, you know, as you enter the pros, you talk to the older guys, you're like, don't try. And <laughs> they say, don't, don't get yeah. starstruck. But like, it's almost kind of, <laughs> I feel like it's impossible, but it comes with experience. Um, but also, you know, believe in 
yourself why you're there and why you're getting the opportunity. Um, and with experience, it just comes natural that you're used to being around those type of players and also those players that have been hyped up to be superstars. Yeah. Um, but can you share with uh, any of the young girls, um, and it'll help guys out as well, but like some of the things maybe that you mentally to, to stay strong and while being 18 and playing with you know, Rebecca Johnson when she was 28 and other players that are older? Is there little yeah. things that you would do? Uh-huh. Like, like kind of pump yourself up and say that you belong there or, <laughs> or you just did your best? Or like, is there any little things that you could? Uh, um, you know, it's, it wasn't easy for sure. But I think actually the hardest part for me was the first year I was in the program, there was, you know, no expectations for me. Because I was, you know, one of the youngest players. I I was from BC at the time. I think we had three BC players in the entire, you know, sixty players um, that were at the camp. So there wasn't a lot of pressure on my shoulders to, you know, no one was I think expecting that much. So I think it was really easy the first year because I just kind of played my game, and um, the older girls were really supportive and you know encouraged me. Um, and so I did that. And then the second year, I think there was then it's they know you right and it's like okay they know what to expect from Micah and even though she's young this is the kind of player she was and I think in that second year is when I started to kind of doubt myself because I felt more pressure yeah because you start um, overthinking a bit it's like oh I did so well in my first year that I need to do good my second year um yeah I, I can relate to you as well with with having seasons like that too um yeah yeah so I think that was the closest thing for me and then I just kind of had to um so yeah in the third year or second year I ended up getting cut from the national team right before the Olympics um and then I kind of had to I kind of had to fall in love with hockey again because I was I feel like I was putting so much pressure on myself to achieve my dream and and push myself to get there despite being young you know it was it was like you said you I kept telling myself oh I deserve to be here I deserve to be here like there must be a reason that I'm here that they keep asking me back but that was almost putting so much pressure on me that I kind of forgot why I was there in the first place, like what my strengths actually were. I was working so hard to work on my weaknesses that I forgot what I was actually good at. Mm-hmm. So, and during that time, yeah, as an athlete player, it's hard to, it's hard to think about those things and, and realize and balance it out in that bit of time that you have. I mean, as time goes by, you can always look back like, okay, next time I can do this better. And, and that's what I would have done. And, Sometimes, though, you know, in some different situations, you don't get that chance again kind of thing. But, um, yeah, no, it's these little things. That's why I ask uh, the players um, to help out and all that because there will be many, many young players that go through this at any level. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah you know, it's like to get, like, to get feedback. So, you know, you get to a certain age when you start – you get feedback from your coaches or from scouts at the end of every season or after camps and – you know, there's, you see, all you see is a list of things that you need to be better at. And you, that's your eyes automatically go to that. And you're like, okay, this summer I'm going to be in the gym. I'm going to be on the ice and this is what I'm going to work on. And then at the end of the summer, maybe you got better at your weaknesses. But I think sometimes as players, we forget yeah. about the things that make us the hockey players that we are. Yeah, um, and we sure. forget that we're, we're still good, even though we have things to work on. Everybody has things to work on, but we still have you know, something that we're really good at and we have to make sure that we keep that in our minds. To be able to stay focused on the things you're good at and sharpen those yeah. types of, whether they're skills or what you're good at. Um, 